Hello everyone. Welcome to another discussion with Plenty with Sulo on dementia. The Lanka Alzheimer Foundation (LAF), which is LAF, incorporated in 2001, is an approved charity registered with the Ministry of Social Services. LAF is the first and to date the only organization dedicated to advocating and addressing the needs of those who diagnoses with dementia in Sri Lanka. LAF is a member of the World Body Alzheimer Disease International, which represent 100 member association from countries around the world. ADI supports its member association including LAF by sharing knowledge information about the latest development in the field of dementia. Today we have very uh, good, I would say, mo most important two guests with us. They are the volunteers actually at LAF. So let me introduce them to you all. One is Beverly Mirando by profession. Uh, she's a lawyer. Am I correct, Beverly? That's right. May I call you Beverly? Yes, certainly. And she's a volunteer here. And also we have Savi Gunasekara, who is a senior volunteer here. Am I correct? Yes. And you work on the Wednesday programs. That's right. Okay. So first, I welcome you all for this discussion. And most, I would say, most two knowledgeable, practical people I'm actually interviewing. So make this a discussion rather than we make it as an interview. So I'll, for my first question goes to both of you all. What made you all to work here as volunteers? Well, my mum had dementia. Okay. Uh, it was a Parkinson's related dementia. So she okay. got Parkinson's that went into dementia. I didn't know the meaning of dementia, Alzheimer's. It was a new word. And uh, she was a leading dressmaker and good shepherd convert, right? <laughs> and uh, it was, I couldn't understand what it so the person who came home and explained it to me was the founder, Lorraine Yu, mm -hmm. uh, who my mom did her bridal. Oh, right? Okay. So she explained what it was because I was just leaving for London right. with my two daughters. I had just got an offer with uh, Nestle mm -hmm. to work in Nestle London and I was hoping to take her also. But the doctor said there's no way because she'll maybe put the house on fire or walk off, right? And that was my first knowledge and understanding of dementia. And the, the main, the most common form of dementia is Alzheimer's. Okay. Right? Uh, so Lorraine came home and told us how to handle her. My husband was here and I had two carers. And it was sad because uh, at the start she was on medication mm -hmm. and first we had to get rid of the depression because okay. she knew something was wrong with her but she didn't know what it was. So first was the depression, then once we got over the depression she was better, she was more stable and for about two years the medication helped. But what was lost was lost, right? And what gets lost first is the recent memory. Okay. The old memory is the last, right? And she used to call me to London, and if I said "mummy," she replied. She straight away reacted. But the next question was, "Is it raining?" You know, and I couldn't fathom what this is. It raining. Then uh, I decided she passed away mm -hmm. in uh, 2005. Fortunately, she didn't go down to a stage where we had to tube feed her. No, she just passed this thing with dementia and Alzheimer's. You never die of it, right? And it was a case of she had a mild heart attack. Right? Okay. So then from there, I went to Singapore. When I was coming back, retiring from Nestle and coming back, uh, I decided in her memory 
I was going to join Lanka as I was. And uh, she did two things. She did Meals on Wheels at St. Teresa's. Okay. And so I decided to, those were my two uh, commitments. And I rang Lorraine. And then we got talking. And I went and visited Singapore, the Alzheimer's Foundation there and see how they do it and so I learned a little thing and then I came back here so she invited me uh, to join as a volunteer which I did in um, I think about June 2017 I came back in May and then that September she asked me to join the board so this is my commitment to my mother so your mother's uh, sickness and uh, what you went through with your mother made you to come and work as a volunteer and also to be part of the mother's memory, am I correct? Yes, correct. Okay. Yes. So, I'll come back to Savi. What made you to join as a volunteer, Savi? Yes, now I came to know Lorraine in the year 2008. That was when also to do with my mother. My mother was celebrating her 80th birthday mm -hmm. that year and she said, I'm having a party, but I do not want any gifts. I want to give the, I want my guests to give money to a charity. And she said, I don't like, I'm not in favor of the Cancer Society because they are well funded. If you were looking for something else, then suddenly he came across the word Lanka Alzheimer's Foundation. So I went through the website and then we decided to give, donate, give a donation to them whatever money the guests gave was going to the Lanka Alzheimer's Foundation and that was the beginning of my association and getting to know Lorraine, Mrs. U, Mrs. Lorraine Yu. So she came and visited us and then she gave us a lot of information on the foundation. This centre was not built yet but there was a lot of, yeah, she was fundraising, she was raising funds for the centre. So then thereafter, uh, getting to know her, then uh, we uh, participate, she invited us to participate in the walk. And then the following year, she said, come and sell raffle tickets with me. So I used to drive, I was in full-time employment then. But uh, during my spare time, I used to join her selling raffle tickets. And then since it was only fundraising at that time, she used to have, there was a concert every year. We used to attend the, I used to go to the concerts, participate in the walks. But uh, Lorraine was working on her own from her house. Then when the center, now during this time I was employed, I was in full-time employment. But when the center opened in 2001, 2011, yeah. Yeah. September, on World Alzheimer's Day, this centre was open and that year I gave up working. So I told Mrs. Yu, I said, now I'm free, anything you want me to do, I'm available. So then one day, then the centre started operation in January. Then a couple of months later, she said, Savi, will you come and volunteer? I said, yes, certainly. And from then on, there was no looking back. So I have been a volunteer at the centre from 2012. Around, uh, I think I started about two months after the centre opened. And I'm still a volunteer and I, it has been a very rewarding I'm experience. Sure. The more you have worked for a multinational, you have worked, more satisfaction come from these volunteer work Definitely. than whatever, whatever we have. It's, we need money, so we have to be employed. Yeah. But then the satisfaction, happiness, we get it in much more. So I think for us, for our age people, is a good learning to understand that careers do exist, but after career, where you need to be there. So my second question, because you all, all spoke about this center, what is the centre? Actually, what does it do? What about this centre? If you all can share your thoughts about this centre, the foundation? Well, uh, the centre is, we have the main activity is the activity centre, mm -hmm. right? Which uh, 
savvy as you can. So the activity center operates on Monday, Wednesday, Friday. Okay. And it's from nine to three. So three days per week. Three days per week. Okay. It's open to people with dementia. And we had, I would say, about, it can accommodate about 20. And we have six to seven volunteers per session. So the clients come in, we call them clients. Yeah, they do not call them patients, they call them clients. Yes. So they, there are different levels of dementia. So they come in and uh, there's like a trial period, whether they are happy, we are happy. And the day is spent, now they are savvy, they'll give you more details with uh, a little breakfast in the morning. Okay. Uh, not breakfast, but maybe a cup of tea. Then they go to the auditorium and they play uh, games, they uh, have various activities. And then they have a, a, a lady who will come and play the piano. Okay. Right, right. Shirastri, who you interviewed earlier, is the one who plays on Wednesday. Right. So it's all the old songs, right? Daisy, Daisy, oh. uh, you know, which they are very familiar with. At Christmas time, it will be Christmas songs. Then there's a lunch, which is, all this is free of charge. There's no charge at, at all. At all, right? And lunch is vegetarian, uh -huh. because then, you know, you respect all. Yeah people, all religions, and earlier we used to give a, a sweet after, you know, like a cake, but now we stop because of nutrition and health, so it's uh, fruit. Okay. And then at about two, they have a cup of tea, maybe a biscuit. By three, the families have to pick them up. That's the only responsibility of the family. So you take care of them full time? Yeah. When they are given, it's your responsibility. That's right. We have a nurse also whom we pay for. Okay. Right, who is there. Uh, we are registered, I think, with the ambulance service by chance there is an issue. But once you're here, you're our responsibility. The family's job is to drop and pick. And right. three, that's it. We, at the moment, we have, we have three different sets of volunteers. On a Monday is one set, Wednesday is a different uh, set, and Friday is yet another. So at the moment, you can, do twice a week, right? Uh, but now we are looking to see since uh, with COVID, lots of people, some of our clients passed away, nothing to do with dementia, but I think just being in the house and you know, that sort of thing. So we are looking at, but it's very much a, a service we provide uh, and it's all done by the volunteers. I'll let Savi talk because she handles that. Hands on. Yes. Savi, what your experience? And yes, now the when the activity center started operations, we started on a Wednesday. Okay. And uh, I came, as I told you earlier, I came about two months after the operations first started. It was only on a Wednesday and we had only about four or five clients. And we had about four or five, a similar number of volunteers. So, and uh, the clients, those were the first, as those were, they were the first clients. I, none of them are there with us now, because a lot of them. Uh, because the unawareness about the disease and the sickness, yes, people were not aware that they need a center like this. That's right. So, so that's why we had only about four or five. Then, of course, as our services got were known, the days were extended to Monday and Friday. Okay. So actually now we, the Wednesday volunteers, are the first set of volunteers. And I think Beverly has told you what we do the whole day. But of course it's just depending on their condition. Because now some of them, their condition goes down. And then they can't do the things that they, they did earlier. So just depending on how they are, we uh, concentrate our activities. Of course, what they love most is the singing and dancing session. And yes. some of the family... Babies, because that's the second childhood, right? Yes, they love it. Yeah. Love and it. some of the family members, maybe send them video clips. 
and they are absolutely surprised to see these ladies dancing singing and after after that that is usually from 11 to 12 and then we have uh, lunch then thereafter we allow them to relax so now till the time of covid the the, now we had, uh, by that time we had extended our services to Monday, Wednesday and Friday. And every, each day there was like full capacity. Okay. Yeah. And sometimes we couldn't even, uh, some, if everybody can't. Come, Comes, it's was very difficult for difficult, you. Difficult, yes. Because you need to give full attention. Yes, to that's them. right. Yes. But yeah. uh, sadly with COVID and the lockdown, some of the clients who were with us don't come anymore. They, I think they were, Their condition they got has gone stuck down. in a house and they felt most... Yes, in fact, uh, what uh, our president, uh, Professor Shehant or Williams told us is that one of the causes was de depression. Okay. Because they were at home all the time. And, uh, and they didn't know what during, was happening because they forget everything. During that time, we lost a number of clients I mean they and those who survived their condition had gone down so much they, that they cannot be brought so which is very very sad so since lockdown uh, since the country opened up the clients we have were completely new they have okay. been recently diagnosed and uh, of course they we have a lesser number now but I think when the awareness goes are back, you all get more clients and also one of the things is I think uh, with the economic crisis and everything people are more focused on economically than what are going on the sicknesses. So that's one of the main reasons but I want to ask you now everything you all provided are free of charge. Yes. So how you get funding, what's the procedure and all that? Well there are some clients whose family members can afford to give something. Okay. So on a regular basis, a donation is given. But right. that is also voluntary. voluntary. I mean, nobody forces tells them us, or tells them. them, yes, you have to give a donation even if we know that they, they can afford. So when they see the services that are being provided, they very willingly give. Okay. And then of course, uh, Beverly will tell you about other sources of financing. And you all do, do have a shop also, right? Yes, we have a shop uh, where, which is downstairs and we have a sale. Okay. Which we have once a year, we used to call it the uh, brand expert sale. Now we just call it the brand sale where we get all uh, clothing from the various contacts and the factories free. All are new clothes from all manufacturers and clients yes. and who donate you all. Yeah, all are new. We okay. don't take second hand. Okay. So all are new and uh, so whatever we earn is for us, right? Because it's donated and it's some fantastic brand names that we get, right? But you have to take what you're given, right? So it's all clothing and we have this sale in uh, November. We didn't have it with COVID, right, because we couldn't. But now, I think this year we'll have it as normal. Because the last year what we did is we didn't tell anybody. We just stole, we didn't want numbers. So we just stole the client, the volunteers, bring your families and friends. But they had to tell us what time we were, they were coming because we didn't want a crowd. And that worked fine, right? And we earned quite a good amount of money. So that was very good. Right. Something else we do is we have a group of uh, people who do donate. Uh, some started and you know they have continued. But in addition, we have we're just going into a very busy time, which is World Alzheimer's Month, okay. internationally, and that is September. So Alzheimer's Disease International, of which you mentioned, we are a member, and uh, they send us various little clips on social media that we can use and earlier we used to have a physical walk and a physical run in September uh, 
that that stopped with COVID. Yeah. So then we turned to the virtual world, right? So we had one event, right? And that has worked fine. So we started the first in 2020, where we were to see Gideon. And uh, that was slightly better time. So we had we were able to end physically okay. climbing Sigil, right? Last year was Gaul, we couldn't. So it was, we had the prize distribution all here. We couldn't go. So this year now we are again getting ready. And it's 21 days, first to the 21st of September. And we are walking from Ratnapura to Independence Square. Okay. Right. So we are just very busy. Uh, and we get, so during this time, and just before in August, what we do, we send out uh, appeal letters, right? And people do give, uh, people repeat. Sometimes we get new uh, people sending in money. So all this helps, right? In addition, for the walk, we have got a few sponsors, right? So we we'll use their brand logo, all that. So this is one avenue where we do get contributions, right? The other was the sale. And of course, people do give as Savi says, right? Families, some families where the mother or father has passed away, but they continue to support because they realize the service that they give. Yeah. Right? And also some of them, they must have got it known later about the disease and they couldn't read and then if they found out maybe they were late for it so there is a, a response they feel that there is a responsibility to help another person yeah, that's so right, there yes. comes uh, and I want was now many of the people who are who lives in Colombo or suburbs uh, can reach you all physically but yes. people who cannot reach you all is there a help center or is there a way that they can get the information well, it's this, uh, you see something that we have started is the memory screen, Okay. right? Which at the start, nobody knew. And I sit in on the memory screen, right? Not that I'm doing it, right? But to help uh, the office, I do sit here. And uh, we have two doctors who come in, sent by Professor Shehan Williams and we, I now find that a lot more doctors recommend their patients. Oh. Their, but it's totally free of totally charge. Totally free. Yes, even that is free. It's free, but there's a donation box. If you want to donate, it's left to you. Right? So we have we have it every, uh, I think, first and third uh, or second, and, you know, twice a month on a Friday. And uh, we have about 10. Now we're getting ready for the next one, which is next Friday. So that we have seen the awareness growing because people are now bringing their parents or their family for a test. For a test. So I'm going to ask this, my, this will be my two final questions to you all. So when someone finds their family member or loved ones has been diagnosed with this, what is your advice to them? Because many of them feel shame or they, they will exclude them. But how to live with someone who has this disease, what is your advice to them? Well, you have to, I mean, this is your family member and you must not in any way isolate them. They, they are part of your family. They don't know what is happening, but then you do. So it is, a, and this is a place, this is a place where they can be brought and nobody will think. Oh, don't see, judge or think they are right. mad. Yes. Don't be ashamed of them. Yes, because Alzheimer's or dementia, no respect of persons. It can hit anybody. As I mean, you would know that world figures have ha had Alzheimer's. So it is just to continue loving them and caring for them. Show them that there is no difference. It make them more inclusive of yes. the lifestyle and also all that. So over the Something I, just to say, because we feel uh, this is something I think that Lorraine started this caregiver support group. Okay. And now we've just started it again. Oh, okay. Right? So it's on Zoom. Mm -hmm. And Shehan started it and I joined in. And it's uh, 
some of the volunteers have joined in who, who are parents. It's because we, we found that some of the, the families feel very lost, right? So now we have this every Tuesday, every okay. other Tuesday for about an hour. And people, the families who, if they haven't brought their parents here, but we discuss and we talk and for them to know they're not alone, so you all give a support to them. That's you are right. just telling them that, that you are there for them. Yes, and also certain things like, you know, they said, I said, don't scold, right? Don't say, why did you, but you just said it. Because one thing they start with is repetition, right? That's the first start, right? So I said, don't scold them. Don't say anything that something else that I mentioned was, you know, in your house. Every year you want to change the position of the bed, you know. And I said, don't do that. Yeah. Because yes, they, are they are the, not familiar. They are not. What, yeah. what they're happy with is sameness. Right? So don't change. They'll go and fall on the floor because the bed was there. Now you, you know, trying to be a little different. You have moved the bread somewhere else. No. Familiarity is what they are comfortable with. So don't change anything, right? And a lot of patience to remember that the person inside was your mom, right? And, uh, or your dad, right? Difficult, I think. And with COVID being a carer was even more difficult because you couldn't take her out, you couldn't do anything, right? So a lot of patience, a lot of love. It is more about empathy and also feel for them because when we were children we used to ask the same question repeated i think more than 50 to 100 times they didn't get angry they felt it was sweet and they answered so now they, they are, there is a time for them also to ask the same question not because they are children because of a disease or because of a sickness so it's our time to show them our love and patience and thank you very much for sharing your experience and also volunteering here. And I think it's one of the experience everyone should go through because we as a country believe in a lot of volunteer work, but there are a lot of segments that we also can contribute. And I think this session brought a huge knowledge about parenting. And also when you say parenting, it's not about just parenting. Parenting the parents, parenting the elderly uh, age people because Sri Lanka has 20% of elderly population in Sri Lanka. So it's high time we get to know about this sickness and also make them inclusive of our society rather than just excluding them. Today, the program was brought from the Lanka Alzheimer Foundation. This is Plenty with Sulu with Delimera Online.